there is a supremely important and useful concept, which is multi-factor authentication or multiple factor authentication, which is the recommended way for someone to validate themselves to a system. Passwords are an obsolete method, are complicated, is a complicated, inhumane, impractical method. The most recommendable thing is that we could use mechanisms that validate our identity, but that it is done in an easy way, fast, secure, and without complications, really, for the people. Multi-factor authentication implies that there are several mechanisms by which I can prove that I am who I say I am. So, what multi-factor authentication implies is that we must use at least two mechanisms to validate someone's identity. Currently, the most common is that we have of course, a username, a password, and then an additional token. For example, as is the case with Microsoft, Google, etc. authentication tools, where when we are going to enter an email, they send us a SMS message to our cell phone or an authentication tool, like, for example, the Microsoft Authenticator that allows us to use this tool receiving a token that changes permanently to be able to validate us. So multi-factor authentication implies that I must know something and have something or know something and be someone, for example, including biometrics. So at the biometric level, we have iris, we have the pupil, we have fingerprint, the complete biometrics of our face, among other factors, right? So the recommendation is that we implement every time we can multi-factor authentication, where we know that it is a much more secure mechanism than it is something we know as the key, something we have like the cell phone to receive the soft token, something we are like our biometrics, something we do like, for example, the speed at which we type on the keyboard, for example, is another mechanism to detect our identity or the location is also another factor. So let's say there are different mechanisms that we can use. The recommendation is that whenever we can, we implement it. There is a very important concept, which is digital signatures. The digital signature is a cryptographic tool that normally allows whoever receives a message to be able to validate who originated it, who was the creator of this document here, because what we are looking for is to guarantee authenticity and generate non-repudiation. Non-repudiation means that there is no deniability on the part of the originator of a message about the nature of the message or about the message itself. Non-repudiation implies that if I send an email to you, I can't say that it wasn't me. It's basically this. So, sometimes, this lends itself to a bit of confusion. Why? Because we talk about electronic signature, we talk about digital signature, and we talk about digitalized signature. Let's try to clarify a little bit. The electronic signature normally can be a kind of algorithm or mark that can be placed normally at the end of a document to guarantee the validity of the same one. Then, normally, for example, could be a kind of watermark, or it could be, for example, even a checksum or similar. The digital signature is different. The digital signature uses electronic mechanisms, as, for example, a certificate, that allows to guarantee the validity of the document, that allows to guarantee where is the origin of the document. And this already normally implies that there is a certificate many times validated by a third party, most of the times really validated by a third party, that attests that this certificate is real, that this certificate belongs to the originating entity of the message. And the digitalized signature is the also known and used copy of your handwritten signature, an image handwritten of your signature and pasted as a JPG BMB on a document that is the digitalized signature. So as you see, the three concepts can be confused very well. There is also a supremely important concept that is the digital certificates. Digital certificates are mainly used in websites, especially when we see the padlock, for example, in a website. Well, we see. Let's look at Google, for example. We see this padlock next to of the URL. This padlock implies that this site has a certificate, a very important thing. Does not mean that this certificate is legitimate or that this site is legitimate. Why? Because there are certifying entities that offer free certificates, unfortunately used in great majority by criminals, to create websites with legitimate appearance because 
the normal thing is that people in a website validate its legitimacy thanks to the existence of this padlock. But if we look at the padlock in detail, we would need to go into a little more detail. C. The certificate. And know that the certificate was issued by a real entity. The organization is Google, etc. Then we see who generated it. It was Google itself. The validity, etc. Then, these certificates are used for it. But there are entities, such as Let's Encrypt, that are, or let's say they try to do a lot of good by giving out free certificates. But unfortunately, the criminals create fake or phishing websites using these certificates, making the padlock appear on their servers, then it lends itself to crime. Let's Encrypt gives free certificates, as you can see. Another entity is, for example, Komodo or Komodo. Here it is. Then they give you free certificate for a certain amount of time. Look for 30 days, I think. 30 days of validity of the certificate. After that, you would have to pay for a real or legitimate certificate. No, let me correct myself. These certificates are real and legitimate, but after 30 days, they become invalid. Then we will have to pay for a certificate. Agreed? Then, it is important to understand that these certificates normally work because there is an entity that issues them, and any person that wants to validate the legitimacy of a certificate will be able to do it against the certifying entity. And there are also validating entities of these digital certificates that are almost always used in websites but can also be used, for example, for the signature of a digital document. Or, for example, to control certain aspects of security, such as the NAC. Then comes a very important concept, which is the public key infrastructure. So, the public key infrastructure implied that I have a signature that can be validated by a third party, similar to the issue of certificates. If you saw the certificate that Google uses, it is validated by Google and issued by Google. If you look at other websites, well, let's say, let's go to a bank. Bank of America, for example. Bank of America has a certificate. Here it is. Look, has its padlock. It has a certificate issued to Bank of America. But if we look at the certificate, it is very likely that was not generated by Bank of America. Look, it was generated at Entrust, at Entrust Inc., which is a worldwide validating entity. At Entrust, you see? So, in the case of Google, they create their own certificates, but in the case of Bank of America, they bought it from Entrust, and Entrust is a validating entity of certificates. If we take a look, we will see, which is an entity. Here it is in Entrust, which is a global leader at the level of certificate generation, protection of credit card systems, etc. So, this is a certificate. Now, in the public key infrastructure, works a little bit similar. Let's say this person needs to exchange data with this other person in a secure way. So, in the exchange, to ensure the security of the exchange and that nobody can get to open or to eavesdrop the communication, you can encrypt this information with a public key, PKI, public key, infrastructure. So, what happens? How does it work? Well, this person asks a registration authority for a certificate. This registry authority requests or asks a certificate authority to issue a certificate for this person. Then, when this person exchanges information with this other person, well, anyone, she or whoever receives the information, sorry, she or whoever receives the information will be able to communicate or connect with a validation authority that verifies that the certificate that is sending this key that this person is sending is legitimate or not. So as you can see, comes into play. Three additional entities, a registration authority who delivers the certificate and who validates that the certificate is real. So as we can see, this is one of the most effective ways to be able to protect information when we need to share it. PKI, Public Key Infrastructure. All right, I hope you found this video interesting. And as always, 
Take care of yourselves, stay healthy, and never stop learning. See you all.